Before we get started, my name is Marlon Blake, and I serve as one of the assistant dean of students here uh, at the University of St. Thomas. Uh, mostly in my role, I work to support uh, students uh, who are having a challenging time at our university, if that be through housing, food insecurity, uh, and other concerns that they may be having. And also, uh, I work and serve as our parent and family liaison. And so one of the reasons um, that we look to uh, do these sessions is to provide parents and families with an opportunity uh, to talk um, with uh, administrators from around campus to get your questions answered. And hopefully you find this time to be a time where you can learn uh, and provide your student with practical guidance on how to be successful. So tonight we'll spend the majority of our time talking a little bit about um, involvement um, and how involvement and being engaged on our campus can lead your student uh, to having a more enriching academic experience. And so again, uh, if you have questions, I would ask that you put those uh, in the Q&A um, section and we will try to address any follow-up uh, questions from there. So uh, I think all of you can probably see from uh, the uh, panelists here, uh, some of my colleagues who've joined me. So Margaret, Rob, Phil, uh, uh, Lisa, thank you so much for joining us tonight. So, so, so Rob, uh, I wanna give all the panelists an opportunity to say a little bit, a few words, but Rob, I would, President Vishar, I'd like to start with you first. And so give you a few moments to, to, to say hello to, to the folks here and uh, a little introduction here. Great, I mean, you want me to just introduce myself or offer? Well, yeah, and give remarks. your spiel, your few uh, remarks that you oh, have. Oh, great. Yeah. yeah, thanks, Marlon. Uh, and Marlon's a great resource for our students. Um, and so a great, great person for parents to get to know as well. We're glad that you've joined us. Uh, we know it's a busy time of year, and uh, especially as parents going through the transition of uh, college, it can be a challenging, harrowing time of year. I'll start by just saying I have three daughters who are either at college age or near college age. And so I have sat through my uh, fair share of parent town halls and uh, orientation sessions and recruiting sessions and all the rest. And I don't know if you're if you're like me, but often the question that is lurking in my mind when I hear these sessions and I hear about all these different programs and the new buildings and what's happening on campus and all this, the only question I have is, do you people understand that my daughter is the center of our world and she is investing herself in you for the next four years? Will you help take care of her and help her grow and flourish? That's my only question. Uh, and so I want you to know right at the outset, that's our focus too. We do not take for granted the privilege we have to walk along uh, your sons and daughters on this uh, this journey that they're in. And it doesn't mean that it's always an easy journey. It's not, as, as you know, college is not all shiny, happy 24 seven. And sometimes those periods of challenge are the most profound periods of growth that we have as young people. And so what we never will guarantee or, or promise is that the college journey is without loss or disappointment or frustration. What we can promise is that your kids will not need to walk that journey alone uh, at St. Thomas. That's, that's what our aim is. That's what our aim is. Um, so I will give you an update just on things that are going on at the university. Campus is bustling. We are back in full force. Uh, we had a couple of years of smaller incoming class numbers due to the pandemic. And this year's uh, freshman class is 1,412, which is an increase of 15% over last year. This is this is wonderful news. Uh, students are anxious to connect with each other and to build friendships and to get out there. Uh, and we're seeing that it's been awesome. Um, we're seeing a very active campus with our two year on campus living requirement. Uh, we've got uh, the, the largest on campus uh, population that we've had. And that just brings tons of energy to the experience of St. Thomas. Um, over the summer, we completed the renovations of Dowling and Brady Halls. Uh, so those two halls are home to nearly 600 first year students this fall. Uh, Brady and Dowling joined the already completed renovation of Ireland Hall, and then the completed construction of the two new residence halls, Tommy North and Fry Hall. Uh, and so 
campus life is a huge part of the college experience as students learn and connect and debate and develop alongside their peers. Um, and we've got tons of programs for helping them share their ideas, develop leadership skills, and have those rich experiences that will uh, help them grow. So one of the umbrella terms that we've been using this year is a term that, that comes from Pope Francis. So as a Catholic university, we looked at what Pope Francis has been talking about in terms of building a culture of encounter. And he calls it a culture of encounter as a way to push back against what he sees as a culture of indifference or a culture of self-absorption. So we wanna always work intentionally and proactively to provide opportunities for genuine encounter, to spur dialogue, to spur mutual respect, to build trust among our students, staff and faculty. We wanna give them opportunities to connect and especially opportunities to build relationships across difference, whether those differences regarding race or ethnicity or gender or political views or religion, whatever it is, we think we're a stronger community and we think we're stronger uh, people who are ready to thrive in the world when we have those experiences. And so that culture of encounter is a theme that you'll see repeatedly in the coming year. A few other highlights, uh, things going on around campus. If you visit campus, you'll see a major construction project going on on the South Campus where we're building the Schenecker Center, which uh, will open in the spring of 2024. It's a STEAM complex, uh, STEM plus the arts. So it's a five level complex that will house a media newsroom, an art gallery, science labs, a 5,000 square foot facility for large scale engineering testing and demonstration and lots more. It's gonna be a transformative academic facility for our campus. It's gonna add tremendously to the students' experience and education and we can't wait to see it open. Uh, you also might know that we've opened our School of Nursing, our Susan Morrison School of Nursing. Uh, you know it's a critical time for the healthcare industry. The nursing shortage has been uh, on the front page of the newspaper. And so this fall, we welcomed our first class of students for the Bachelor of Science in Nursing and for the pre-licensure Master of Science in Nursing. Uh, that's part of our commitment to the, serving the common good and addressing the urgent uh, nursing shortage in doing a way that, that focuses on health equity. Uh, this is also our second year of uh, Division I athletics. That's generated a ton of excitement around campus. And I'm gonna let our, our VP of athletics, uh, Dr. Phil Eston, discuss that in just a bit. All I'll say is that I hope you consider coming out to support our teams, whether it's at home or on the road. There's a lot going on uh, in athletics. And then I'll just wrap up my session uh, of this by reinforcing the depth of our understanding for what our calling is as educators uh, for your children. <clears throat> you know, a couple, I'm an attorney and a couple of weeks ago, I was at an event and one of our brand new students mentioned to me that, that he hoped to become an attorney. And so I invited him to uh, my office to talk about law school, talk about what it means to be an attorney. And we sat down and we talked for a half hour about that. And that was without question, the highlight of my day, because there, there is no greater privilege than when we get to be part of young adults discerning how their joy, their energy, their gifts align to meet the world's needs, right? When we can do that, when we can have those sparks, and as parents, you've seen that with your own kids, right? You'd see, oh, this is something I'm passionate about. This is something that I can connect with the world around me through. Well, we get to do that every day, but what that requires is we can't simply be focused on imparting knowledge to students. Yeah, of course we have to do that too. We can't just be giving them technical skills, although we have to do that too. What we have to be doing is entering into relationship to build understanding, to build trust. Uh, because I know that if you're like me as a parent, what you want above all is for your child to be in an environment where they are known, they are understood, and they are cared for. And they're also stretched and put in a position to grow and figure out what their calling is going to be in the world. And it's uh, such a privilege that we can do that. And we're always looking for new opportunities and new ways to support your students on that journey. 
if there are issues or things that I can help with along the way, please don't ever hesitate to, to reach out to me. I may not know the answers, but I'll, I'll have a good idea of where to connect you. So thanks once again for joining us and I'll hand it back to Marlon. Awesome, thank you, uh, President uh, Vischer. Really appreciate your words and uh, we'll be hearing a little bit more from you in a little bit. So uh, my next colleague, uh, Margaret Cahill. Oh, look at that, pops up on the screen. Uh, who's the director of Campus Life here. So, Margaret, would you mind sharing a few of your remarks as well? Yes, thank you, Marlon. I was um, so pleased to be able to, to ask to participate tonight. Um, one, I this is the first year I'm a, a parent of a college first year student. So for any new uh, college parents out there, I'm, I'm right there with you. Um, but also just because of the timing of this, this webinar, we are four weeks in and students the sort of the honeymoon period, if you will, of, of college is, is over. They're starting to settle in. Um, they're starting to, um, the newness of college life has started to wear off. They're starting to realize some new academic expectations. Um, maybe things aren't going great with the roommate all the time, like, you know, starting to feel homesickness. Um, and, you know, sometimes homesickness can lead to wanting to go home on the weekends that kind of thing. And this is a great time at this point to talk about ways that your students can be engaged on campus. So I'll talk a little bit first about what campus life can offer and then just talk also highlight some other um, engagement, fantastic engagement opportunities from across campus. So campus life, one of our, the things we're proud to say is, is that we offer something for students to do every single weekend that um, during the academic year. And so whether it's an excursion off campus, um, some sort of recreational type event, um, or a, a something happening on campus, we offer students something to do every single weekend. This is in addition to also hosting events specifically for our different cohorts. So we have um, STAR, at STAR, our St. Thomas Activities and Recreation Programming Board hosts events for our first year students, our second year students, and our upper division. And those events are, are more designed for things of interest, what might be their capability to get to different places and that kind of thing. Um, it might include trivia. We've got live music on Thursday nights. We do outdoor movies. Bingo is a huge hit. If you'll be here this weekend for family weekend, we have a big bingo night planned. Um, and so just lots of different ways to just get out of their room or come to campus if they're community and just in, engage with others. They can come in a group or they can come by themselves. We have star interns. So we'll make sure everyone gets connected. Um, other opportunities are student clubs and organizations. We have about 130 of them. Um, a little over half of our students, our undergraduate students, participate in at least one club. It's a great way to um, learn new things, to explore a passion that they have even further. Um, and students can just, you know, either visit Tommy Link to check out different clubs or search out different areas they might be interested in, um, check out their events, or just attend a meeting and see what they like. Um, clubs are a really, really great way. We've had two engagement fairs that our first year students have been able to attend, one during welcome days, and then our campus-wide student activities fair was um, just a week ago. So students have had the opportunity to engage, but they can also check out online. Um, we have some really fantastic traditions on campus, um, including our welcome days, and these are collaborations with um, student affairs and others across campus, but welcome days for our newest Tommies, um, traditions like family weekend, homecoming, um, holidays at St. Thomas. First week back, we do a whole first week back of activities to um, kick off spring semester. Senior days for our graduating Tommies and then Tommy Fest, which is our big undergraduate campus-wide sort of end of, this, uh, end of, this, end of the school year. Um, students can also engage in their residence halls. Um, lots of events, they can either be involved in helping plan those events or attending them. Again, another great way um, in smaller groups to get to know people on their floor. Um, our off-campus student life hosts events for our commuting students. Center for Wellbeing offers different classes and workshops for students to do. They can do yoga, um, just a, a whole variety of things. And of course, Create Space, one of our, our fan faves downstairs on the first floor of the student center where students can do a lot of arts and crafts, which are very popular um, and really explore different ways of the, their own creativity. Um, student Diversity and Inclusion Services and DAB, our activities, Diversity Activities Board, students can find connection and support. Um, they can stretch themselves and learn new things. Um, I know Dr. Eston will talk about this later, but athletics, 
attend a game, cheer on our Tommies or get involved in intramurals. That's a great way to also meet people and stay active. Um, and finally, student employment is a really fantastic way to be engaged on campus and earn a little spending money. So um, the students can learn or enhance different skills that they have, meet new people, work on a team um, and make a little money. So those are just um, some ways to get engaged. And then finally, just one last opportunity I wanna share is even with all of those things, sometimes it's still hard. And so um, in Campus Life, we offer a program called Tech, our Tommy Engagement Consultants. Students can fill out a form of things that they're interested in and that, that they wanna do. And then one of our student leaders creates a, a plan and meets with them one-on-one -on -one, uh, several times to um, identify different ways personally, kind of creates a personal action plan for them to get engaged on campus and then does some check-in meetings with them throughout the semester. And students who have gone through there have found it really, really helpful just for sort of finding that first first spot to sort of connect into. So again, it's getting involved, um, encouraging your students to stay here, to, to try something new. Even if they don't like it, they can, if they just try it once, if they join a club and they don't like it, they can step out of the club, but really just encouraging them to, to get involved, to, to be engaged um, can really help getting over that this, these next couple of weeks here as they're getting settled in their academic schedules and um, and, and getting adjusted to college life. Awesome, thank you, Margaret. Really thank appreciate you. that. Um, so, uh, Dr. Esten, uh, there's been so many wise words spoken about you. So, you're, here's your opportunity to be able to 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 uh, say hello to to everyone in attendance tonight. And thanks for being here too. Well, thanks, Marlon. I appreciate it. You know, I appreciate also being here with with all of our colleagues. I'm a I'm an alum class of 1995, and I've been back on campus now for almost four years. Believe it or not, um, just in time to have to find a new conference and try to make this transition from Division Three uh, to Division One. And and I can tell you, I, uh, the students at large and our student athletes have really leaned into this opportunity for St. Thomas to do something that's unprecedented. And as we as we kind of embark on this venture to become the first ever institution to have that transition directly from division three to division one, it opens up a lot of opportunities, again, for student athletes and, and for students at large. Some of them have been mentioned tonight, but you know, a lot has changed as we've made this transition over the course of the last couple of years. Certainly uh, the travel for our student athletes are different. The, the level of intensity of the competitions are different. Our rivalries are different. We're now competing in four different conferences across 18 different states, which gives us opportunities to recruit a little bit more broadly than we have in the past, get into media markets differently than we have in the past, and of course, engage with our alumni across the country, perhaps a little differently than we have in the past. But I'm also really proud to say that while so much has changed and will continue to evolve over time, the core of what we do hasn't changed at all and that we're here to create conditions for success for our student athletes so that they can have a positive and meaningful experience. And, and we measure that success across four dimensions of confidence of excellence. That of course is in the classroom, engaging in our community, in building character, and then, and then in, in the competitive venues. And one of the things that I long have felt St. Thomas has done as well, if not better than anybody, is, is what I call, and others call experiential learning. And it's something that we hold or we, we take very seriously in athletics, but it's also something that I think this transition allows all of our students to engage in a little bit differently through through intercollegiate athletics than perhaps we have, have been able to offer in the past. And Margaret mentioned uh, student employment. You know, we, we now employ um, over 100 students to support events, support marketing, support communications and writing and journalism and and creative graphics and all of, and, and train athletic training. Uh, really a lot of different student employment and engagement opportunities to offer that real life experiential learning as they think about what's next for them. They can enter the workforce uh, with a couple of really great years of experience under their belts. You know, um, also met, was mentioned was the two year residency requirement. And I think with that, you know, when I was at St. Thomas, I lived on campus for two years, uh, not because we were required to, but because I think probably because my parents told me I had to, frankly, but but I did nonetheless. And and having things to do while on campus is a really important component as margaret talked about to a really rich and vibrant student experience for those couple of years while in residence and so i, I do believe 
um, perhaps somewhat through a biased lens, that I do believe that engagement in athletic events for students at large offers uh, energy and stronger affinity and helps to build friendships, helps to build camaraderie on campus. And so we've really seen great student attendance at football games, at volleyball games, at basketball games. This last weekend, we offered shuttle buses to hockey games. We play off campus. Um, our men's women's hockey team play off campus. So we offered a shuttle bus, had a sold out crowd, had a pep band for the first time, really an exciting atmosphere again uh, this last weekend. And that, and that just creates a little bit um, closer energetic community, I believe, uh, at, at the University of St. Thomas. And then lastly, you know, I was going to mention a lot of people helped me kind of with my remarks. I appreciate it. Uh, the campus recreation intramurals on campus, we take, again, we take seriously our responsibility to provide recreational opportunities for students at large and faculty and staff. Um, and that's through um, the ARC, the Anderson Athletic and Recreation Complex, of course, um, various workout opportunities, gym opportunities, fieldhouse opportunities, but then also um, intramural opportunities. And those intramurals have grown substantially over the last couple of years as students are coming back to campus and living um, on campus and wanting to engage more so than they have the last couple of years. Those are really vibrant um, and more plentiful as they, as they have been in the past. So um, I do appreciate uh, you know, your support. I appreciate your support of your students getting involved in athletics and in campus rec uh, and intramurals. Thank you. Awesome, thank you, Phil. Uh, again, Phil uh, serves our director of athletics, and and last and certainly not least, Dr. Lisa Waldner, who serves as our associate vice provost. Uh, Lisa, would you mind sharing a few words as well? Yes, thank you, Marlon. And I'll try to keep this short so that we have lots of time for parent questions. But I'm out of academic affairs, and so I had an office uh, of undergraduate student achievement. So it's all about services and programs that support students. So some of the areas that fall uh, in my office are our Aquinas Honors Program for students who want to engage in an undergraduate honors program. And it's a, a selective process, but it gives high achieving students an opportunity to do a little bit more uh, while they're at St. Thomas. We have an undergraduate research opportunities program for students who are interested in research and discovery. And I'm really excited about some of the redesign that's going on this year as we try to think about different stages of research and how we can get students involved in, at earlier points in their undergraduate uh, career. We also have the Excel uh, research program as, 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 as part of that um, uh, you know, set of, of opportunities for students as well. Um, academic counseling, uh, faculty advising fall in my area along with disability resources. We have pre-health advising to provide extra support for those students who are thinking about medical school, uh, dentistry, and, and so forth. And then we also have the Office of uh, Retention. Uh, we want your students to graduate in four years. We want them to make timely progress towards degrees. And so we're constantly looking at data to find out, you know, are there barriers? Uh, are, you know, we're, we're, what areas are students struggling in? Are there some policies and processes that we can streamline so our students can be more successful. And then we also have the Center for Student Achievement, which is really a part of what it is, is a one-stop uh, shopping. Uh, I don't wanna call it shopping, but in a sense, it's it's like uh, one place where you can come and find a, a bunch of services provided together. So we have a representative from the registrar's office there. We have um, information on student tutoring. Um, and I wanna call out in particular a new initiative, and that is to offer uh, more tutoring on Sunday evenings. That seems to be a, an area that students have asked for that we're trying to respond to. So opportunities either virtually or in person to connect with tutors on Sundays. And so we're doing that space in the library and we're doing a pilot project this fall. So really anything related to supporting students um, and giving them opportunities outside of the classroom to help them be successful are some of the programs that fall in my area. Couldn't unmute myself. Uh, thank you, thank you, Lisa. Really uh, appreciate it. So uh, I would, uh, I think, for all the other panelists, well, uh, President Vischer and um, the panelists, if you can uh, kind of un, uh, again come up to the the screen to unmute yourselves, because uh, just have a couple questions for all of you. 
Um, so, uh, President Fisher, I'll start with you. Um, so thinking about just from the, you know, just the university perspective, can you talk to, and you talked a little bit about this earlier, but could you potentially talk to our parents and families about why is it important for them uh, from the university standpoint to encourage their students um, to be involved? Yeah, uh, so the, the most powerful legacy from our students' time at St. Thomas is not going to be a piece of information that they learn, and it's not going to be something that they remember from a lecture. It's going to be the relationships that propel them forward and carry them to success. And the way you build relationships is you lean in, right? And you take advantage of opportunities. You show up and you have face-to-face -face encounters with people and you build familiarity, you build trust, and then you lean on each other as you move forward. So there are so many uh, student org opportunities here, club activities, events, and you can't go to all of them. And, you know, you, you got, we got to meet students where they're at. Some of them can go 24-7, seemingly, of social activities. Some of them get tapped out pretty quickly and need some time back in their room just decompressing. But whatever it is, there is a space for someone that will be tailor-made for what they need. But college is also not a place where spoon feeding happens, right? students need to take initiative and be proactive and say, you know what, I'm going to show up here and I'm going to introduce myself to the person sitting next to me and we're going to see where this goes. But if, if you view it, I mean, for those, of, for those of us who have gone to college, if you view it from the 25 year perspective and you look back 25 years ago, what, is, what are your most powerful memories from college and what has changed your life the most? And for the vast majority of people, it's going to be the relationships. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, definitely the relationships and uh, are definitely going to be some, some of our students care for a lifetime. So I do uh, want to mention, I know in the Q&A, one of the questions was around student employment. And I think for our parents and families, you can always encourage your student to go to One St. Thomas and search student employment. And that will help them to find a lot of the employment opportunities that are on campus. Uh, so definitely want to encourage you if your student is thinking about working on campus, is, that's one of the ways that can do that. And so kind of in the uh, transition in that direction, uh, there are many opportunities for students to be able to be involved on campus. Uh, so for uh, Phil, Lisa, or Margaret, uh, could each of you talk a little bit about are there specific ways that students can be involved? Uh, given your uh, functional area and how can and what and what does that look like for some of our students? I'll, I'll just start real quick. Um, I think my area is a little different in that we want all of our students to engage with our academic counselors as they need that support. But a lot of my other areas, it would be dependent on student interest. So, you know, pre-health advising is going to be something we want students to engage in if they are thinking about medical school, because there's a lot of um, programming that we can offer to help that student get prepared for medical school, dentistry. But obviously, if you're not planning on medical school, that wouldn't be something you would engage in. Um, not all students are interested in undergraduate research, um, but for students that might instead better be served by an internship. And so maybe engaging in, we don't have career services here tonight, but engaging in career services might be a better option for a student who's thinking about careers, isn't necessarily thinking about graduate school. Um, so even, um, so, so some of my things are things that our students opt into uh, because they have a particular interest. Yeah, I'll share real quickly. You know, I, I did share some of the ways that I think students can get involved. Uh, intramurals is, is one that offers community. I think it's important for students to find community um, if they can when they when they get to campus. Of course, there's student employment opportunities um, and those that are seeking, seeking student employment opportunities can simply come to the Anderson Athletic and recreation complex and inquire about um, some of those uh, opportunities at the at the main desk. 
One of the things, though, that I that I, I wanted to mention as we were thinking through this, you know, as I tell our student athletes, it's our responsibility to create conditions for success. And it's our responsibility to provide all of these opportunities for students to engage. However, we can't make them engage. And so ultimately, it is the student's responsibility to find a way to engage. And set, saying that, I know I've got three kids uh, as well, and they're all really different. And one of them would be leading the charge in student activities, and the other one would be sitting in the back room waiting for someone to ask him to engage. And so I think one of the biggest components and one of the biggest things we can encourage our students to do is just simply show up and be present in the, the, the uh, student center, be present in the arc, be present at athletic events, because you're bound to stumble into a conversation at some point. And you never know where that conversation is going to lead. And so I, I realize that it's easier. It's easy for us to say engage. And, and President Fisher had alluded to that. It's easy for us to say um, inquire. But sometimes it's it's important to just show up and, and those relationships and, and other things develop. I would echo everything that has already been said. Um, I think, you know, just some practical places would be Tommy link to to log in and to see for students to see what their opportunities are. And I think for our parents and families, I think one way you can encourage your student to be involved is to, you know, encourage them to find where their where their interest is. You know, we have all shared a, a ton of different ways to engage. And, and as Dr. Eston said, it, you know, there's no one way for everyone. And so, but, but there are ways for, there is something for everyone. And so, um, you know, I think as parents and families to encourage your students to, to keep at it, to, to show up, to, you know, as Phil said, be present to, um, I think those are really important ways to encourage your student. It's, it's hard and it's a big change, but if they're, you know, wondering about coming home, maybe encourage them to stay and, and see what happens or find, you know, attend to something. And again, it can be something as, simple as trivia, you know, to, in those, we have lots of events that are easy for one person to walk into and become a part of. Not everything is a group or a team activity. And so um, encouraging students to do it that way. Tommy Link is a fantastic way for students to search based on the type of events they're interested in, different subject areas, um, whether it's on the weekends, is there free food? Like there's all different ways to search for um, different events. And so encouraging your students to check out Tommy Link and use it um, is, is really helpful. Um, thank you so much for, for doing that. So uh, not, not to put everybody on the spot, but I want to ask a couple follow-up questions uh, based on some of the things in, in, the, in the chat. Uh, so, um, so one of the questions, uh, Phil, that was asked was about uh, getting involved in intramurals uh, is the best way for students to find that information is just by going uh, on Tommy Link or going to the intramurals website or where is the kind of best way to find that info? Yeah, there, there's an intramurals website that can be found uh, on tommysports.com and I can put the link, the direct link in the, the chat below and the Q&A below. So, so you have that. It's through an external third party that we use called IM Leagues. And that gives opportunities for both club sports. I mean, that's the other thing that that lives in student affairs actually outside of athletics is getting involved in club sports, which is a little more organized than intramurals. Um, but that would provide links um, for those that are interested for both intramural activities and for club sport activities. And, and then also, if again, if your students are in the ARC, the Athletic and Recreation Center, just inquiring at the main desk uh, there's always information at the main desk and there's somebody there who can help answer questions if they want, if they had questions about the different activities when they start and finish and what nights are on, et cetera, that, that are offered. But I'll, I'll see if I can figure out how to use the technology here and put this link in the Q&A. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, so, um, Lisa, one of the questions that I also got to ask was you talked a little bit about the tutoring on Sundays. Uh, can students just show up to that tutoring? Would they need to sign up? Is it just free and accessible to all students? Yeah, thank you for asking that question. Um, we don't have every single academic program. Uh, we're doing a pilot to see what the student demand is. But uh, for example, math, the, the Math Resource Center, Mark is open uh, Sunday evenings now. The Writing Center is gonna have sessions in the library. 
uh, economics is participating virtually, but the best way to find out, and students can just show up for those, those uh, sessions, but the best way to find out what's available is just to go to our Center for Student Achievement website and go to tutoring and you'll see the, um, the, all, the, all the different departments are listed and then what, what they offer and when. Awesome, thank you so much, appreciate that. Um, so um, again, I just want to remind folks, uh, if you have questions to put those in the Q&A and our wonderful folks are helping to answer those questions. Um, so um, with that being said, so so Margaret, you talked a little bit about this earlier uh, by some students using Tommy Link, but are there other ways for students to find out uh, about how to get involved with student orgs? I know some of the student org events have kind of already passed, but are there other ways that students can find that information? Absolutely. So we, um, so Tommy Link is where they are all listed and where you can find out where meetings are and you can, students can message the leaders of the club to see, um, to ask questions and everything. But other ways are, and it, it depends on what type of clubs. Um, a lot of our academic clubs have an affiliation through the academic department. And so asking maybe, um, one of the professors about the club, whether, you know, or some of the students in their classes, like how might be different ways to engage. That's another way. Um, we send out an email every Wednesday night um, from Campus Life that talks about what's coming up this weekend and that we pull from events from Tommy Link from all around campus. So not just Campus Life sponsored ones, but from all around. And that includes a lot of club events. So maybe it's not something they've seen before, you know, heard of or saw on Tommy Link. Um, but that's a nice way to get a snapshot of what's coming up this weekend on campus for different ways to engage. Awesome. Thank you. Really appreciate that. Um, so, um, so Lisa, one of the questions that uh, parents uh, and families often have is about where can they find, uh, where could their student particularly find access to, to count, to, to find, um, um, academic counselors if they have questions around some of their academic concerns. So could you talk a little bit about some of the where could a student if they needed to get some uh, assistance with academics, uh, in particular around guidance around class issues, uh, um, where could they potentially go to for that? So I think we've got two good sources of, of information. One is the student's faculty advisor. So every first year student uh, this uh, summer and fall were assigned to a faculty advisor, and they've been meeting uh, regularly uh, with students throughout the first semester. So for example, we have a what's called a, a group advising meeting coming up. I think it's October 18th or so, which is another opportunity for students to engage uh, with, with their academic advisor in kind of a, a group setting. And then uh, there also will be individual meetings that students will have with their academic advisors uh, in November, uh, or actually late October, early November, prior to uh, spring registration opening up. But our academic counselors are also available and they often help with kind of more process issues. So faculty advisors tend to talk more about, you know, um, you know, course selection and, you know, what courses meet which areas in the core and how do you, how do you kind of combine if you want to take this for a uh, core requirement, but you're also interested in a particular major, what might be some good courses to take. And academic counselors are good at those questions as well, but they also help with kind of some more process pieces like, well, I'm having trouble accessing my degree evaluation. You know, how do I go about doing that? Um, so we have academic counseling. They are located uh, in the first floor of Murray Herrick, right, right next to our center, uh, Center for Student Achievement. And uh, students can uh, either they can they can walk in and there are there are drop in hours. Um, it's probably always better to try to make an appointment um, just because you can be guaranteed. You know, I mean, you might need a, a 20 or 30 minute conversation. If you just pop in, you might just only have time for a 10 or a five or 10 minute conversation. So appointments are better. But, you know, that at the last minute, you can come in and, and drop in and they'll still be able to see you. Those appointments can also be over Zoom. Um, we have a uh, academic counseling is running something called a registration kickoff event, November 21st through 23rd. And this is where first year students can receive assistance with spring course registration. So if they're just not comfortable with the Murphy online system, don't really remember how that process worked in the summer. The idea would be that we would have hoped they would have already talked to their faculty advisor 
and had a sense of what courses they should be signing up for. And if, uh, you know, if, if, if classes of sections aren't available, what are some alternatives? But to get the, the hands-on help with actually using the system, they might wanna, they should uh, show up for that registration kickoff event. Awesome, thank, thank you, Lisa. Really appreciate you uh, following up on that. So I did wanna uh, remind folks that uh, Phil did put uh, the link uh, to intramurals uh, in the Q&A. Uh, so uh, if you did want to follow up or look more into intramurals and some of the club sports, uh, that link uh, is to that into uh, the, in the chat currently. So uh, in the Q&A section. So, um, so thank you to you all for sharing some of those questions. So before we wrap up our, our time here, I do wanna uh, kind of ask one final question. Uh, and that is, uh, so for all of our panelists, uh, and uh, Margaret, I'll ask you to start since you're the first person on my screen here. So uh, is there any final advice that you would offer uh, to parents and families about uh, encouraging their students uh, to become involved? Um, I, I think to just, um, in, I teach a first year experience class. And in my class today, we were talking about what their college life what, what they expected from college and what it feels like. And I think there's a lot of unrealistic um, things out there in movies and TV and that kind of thing. And so I think just, just encouraging them to give it a chance. Not They're not going to meet their best friend for life the first day they move in. Um, you know, not everything goes perfectly um, the way they want it to go. So to, to really just encourage them to, to um, keep trying, to keep showing up, keep being present, um, to enjoy it, to have fun. This time goes very fast. Um, and yeah, to just encourage them to, to, to keep, keep engaging. Awesome. Thank you. Time does go fast. September was a blur. Uh, Phil, you're next on my screen. Any uh, final uh, advice uh, for, for parents and families? Margaret took all my wisdom. It, you know, I, w I would agree that it's, you know, I said this before, I think really the, the one thing that we can encourage all of our students to do is be present. Um, the worst thing that I think they can do is, is just to not try to engage. And again, I, I know it sounds easy and it's overwhelming, but I think just hanging up, hanging around in the student center and hanging around in the view and hanging around in the arc, you're going to you're going to find people who have similar interests and you're going to find people who are kind of coalescing around the same things that you have interest in and that that can be a good starting point. I, I think those that are outgoing and are willing to engage, it's easier. And maybe we don't need to kind of prod those students as much because they're by nature going to find ways to engage. But those that aren't as extroverted, so to speak, um, I, I think just being around others is, is going to be as helpful as anything. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, Lisa, any uh, any advice from you? Well, I want to make a plug again for getting students to visit their professors during office hours. It really is a underutilized resource, and um, professors can provide great guidance. That conversation in office can often be uh, less intimidating than asking a professor a question in class. So it's not just about, I need help, come to office hours, but come to office hours to establish a relationship. Um, staying on campus on weekends and um, in the evenings for, for commuter students and getting involved in all those activities that Margaret and Phil have talked about, I think is a good way to build connection and build belonging. And we know those things are important to students to, to keep them engaged in college. So I would just say that the first semester of college is, a, we know it's a time of transition and challenge and adjustment and even students who had great grades in high school and really come in with strong academic uh, uh, potentials may struggle their first semester of college as they adjust you know, the social challenges and making friends and meeting people and developing that sense of belonging. So I just wanna say that's normal. Uh, most students overcome it and they can get back on track and just recognizing this is normal, encouraging your student to seek out those resources is important and let's just love them through it. I love them through it. I love it. Um, Rob, Rob, I'm going to give you a few minutes, extra minutes to think about this. I want to go. Uh, there was a question that got posted uh, in Margaret and uh, Phil. I want to 
bring both of you on really quickly. Margaret, could you remind uh, some of our parents and families when is Parent and Family Weekend and where might they find the information and feel? Could you talk a little bit about homecoming as well? Yes, absolutely. Family Weekend is this weekend. Um, it kicks off on Friday. Um, we have a full schedule of events. I will put it in the chat here, the list um, link to the website. Um, but lots of ways to pop in and out and engage. Um, we've got athletic events. That's, that schedule is also in there. Um, students or parents can meet all of our deans Saturday morning before um, the football game. We have an opportunity to tour the chapel, uh, meet, do a hear a presentation by Father Chris Collins, our vice president for mission. Just lots of different ways to to connect um, both with campus and with your student this weekend. We hope to see you there. Awesome. I know y'all are doing a great job with all the programming happening. Phil, anything you want to highlight? I know homecoming is a couple weeks, but while we have them here, you know. Yeah, you know, I, again, uh, Parents Weekend this weekend is a great way to engage and attend, you know, I'll say through my lens, attend an athletic event with your student. Um, and I think you'll see that it's, it's it, there's a lot of great energy that has been kind of um, created over the, last, over the last couple of years. And then homecoming is actually next weekend. Uh, we So this weekend in football, we play uh, Davidson, but we also have volleyball and men's soccer on campus this weekend. And we're playing, um, we've got men's hockey this weekend as well. And the next weekend, homecoming against Drake uh, coming up from, from Iowa. So uh, two weekends in a row, a lot of great activity on campus and opportunity to engage with your students and, and fellow, you know, fellow Tommies uh, around in St. Paul on Summit Avenue. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, and I definitely, again, I'll say something at the end, but encouraging everyone uh, to come over the next couple weekends. Uh, so... So President Fisher, you you're the hopefully the words of wisdom of the last one that offers some advice here. So yeah, Marlon, I feel the pressure now. I got more time than everybody else. So I the advice I would offer is the same advice I offer to parents in general, particularly parents who are are uh, undertaking this work in the era of social media. And that's helping our kids realize that comparison can suck the joy out of life. And so a lot of students will come into college with this uh, uh, in their minds, a, a vision of what college is supposed to be like, or they see the experience their roommate is having, or the kids down the hall are having, or their high school friend who's posting things on Instagram is having, and they feel like, wait, why am I not having what their experience is? And we know that our kids are uniquely gifted with unique needs, unique strengths, unique passions. And so I always wanna empower our students to have the courage to pursue the college experience that is best for them, regardless of what they see out there or what they saw on TV or movies, and to have the courage to sort of carve their own path and not just be weighted down with the expectations that they see around them where they think, oh, this is the template that I have in my mind for college. No, have, have the courage to, to make the college experience that is best for who you are, not what you think the surrounding society has loaded onto you from, from what you see. And, and I think a lot of parents, a lot of us could use this advice ourselves too, and not allow the burden of comparison to diminish our capacity for joy in the moment. And, you know, colleges occasionally, not St. Thomas, but colleges occasionally build the expectations for, for what the college experience is as though every struggle, every challenge you've had up until the point you turned 18 is now going to be lifted. Birds will be singing the skies will be blue all the time once you step into college. And we know that's not the case. The stuff you've struggled with is still going to be with you, right? The challenges you've had will still be with you. It'll be a new environment with new relationships, but we still are on this journey of life that's a messy journey. So to be able to free ourselves from the burden of comparison and just focus on what is the most meaningful uh, college experience that can be a sustainable source of joy and growth over a lifetime. That's the college experience I want, regardless of what I'm seeing on Instagram. 
Beautiful. Thank you so much, uh, President Vishen. I definitely want to echo what you said. I definitely think it's important for us as parents and families, and I think for me and the work of working with parents and families to encourage their students to sometimes take a leap. And I think being a good guide to them, to encourage them to, to sometimes be a little uncomfortable, to experience the, the, the multitude of things we have to offer here at the university. And I definitely think um, encouraging them to, to limit the comparisons is a, is a beautiful way to start uh, along the way. And so thank you for, for sharing that as well. And so with that being said, I definitely want to thank all of you, President uh, Vischer, uh, Lisa, Phil, and Margaret. Thank you again for, for joining us tonight. I know uh, for me, I'm always thankful to be able to, to learn from all of you, and especially with my colleagues, and appreciate you taking your time this evening to do that. And also to our attendees, I uh, definitely want to thank all of you for taking the time tonight to, to uh, meet with all of us. Uh, I will say after this, um, for all those who did sign up, we will send out the recording so you could go back and play it later. I would also encourage you to check out um, on YouTube our two previous uh, family town halls. One of those last semester was about study abroad, volunteering, uh, and community engagement um, and career services. So, uh, for, and also for those parents who did submit questions we didn't get to answer tonight, I think we've worked to answer most of those questions individually uh, to follow up emails or sent you to the person who may need to follow up with you uh, regarding your question. So uh, again, thank you all our panelists. I also wanna thank uh, Amy and Linda, uh, also in the background of answering a bunch of questions for us as well, and Lorena as well for, for helping us tonight and uh, Rick as well for a lot of the IT help and support. So again, panelists, thank all of you. Hope to see all of you on Parent and Family Weekend and Homecoming and hope you have a great evening as well. Bye-bye.